Welcome back. It's the Weekly Rewind. I'm Kira, and my fingers are extra crossed tonight that uh, everything's going to go smoothly. We took a couple weeks off so I could dink around and figure out what the heck is going on with my system, and I think we figured it out. So hopefully, no skips tonight. But if there are, we're gonna work through it. I'm just gonna tell you that now and we'll come back around. But I did a long, long test before we got started in hopes that we would avoid that issue yet again. But best laid plans and all that, am I right? So, got my kickstart ready to go. It's gonna be a good evening. So, football Sunday. If you're here, I'm surprised because the Niners are playing Green Bay. I'm a Niners fan. I don't know who everybody else is rooting for. But I actually kind of want to see Aaron Rodgers make it to the Super Bowl because he's like just a super wholesome, seems to be a super wholesome good dude. I don't know if that's true, but he seems nice. I hope he, I hope he gets there. But at the same time, Niners, I'm from California originally, so I got to root for the Niners. It's not really a game, says Carol in the comments, so uh, it sounds like nothing's changed since last I looked, and the Niners were doing pretty well, so we'll see. Uh, hey, Andrew. Hey, Saul. Games of Fire. Carol. Nerfenstein. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, thanks. So uh, Nerfenstein, a.k.a. Girly Gamer, just said she likes my shirt. Uh, try and... Send my co-op. I don't know if you guys are familiar with their comic, but they're really great. Uh, they make me laugh, and it's one of my favorite things to consume in board game media. Uh, the football game apparently is very boring. Er Andrew in the comments is falling asleep, so let's try and liven things up with some board games. Um, so the first... <laughs> The first thing that I want to talk about is, behind me actually is Warp's Edge. Um, if you guys are solo gamers out there, uh, or just like, honestly, you can play Warp's Edge. It's a solo game. It's meant for solo only, but you could easily choose to make it a co-op and play it with somebody. You just make the decisions together. Uh, Derek and Lizzie did it on Board Game Spotlight last week, kind of. Lizzie was mostly driving, but Derek was there giving his opinions, and it's a really neat soul game. It's really tough. It's, like, really tough. Um, Jeremy Howard's been playing the heck out of it. Uh, he's got a couple of live streams up on Facebook and one up on, we p uploaded one of them to YouTube, so if you're curious about it, definitely, definitely check it out. Uh, yeah, Turmoil. The, I'm mostly excited about getting the player boards. <laughs> I think a lot of people were that way. Turmoil is, adds a ton of interesting stuff to the game, but, um, and so now I feel like I've got everything. I, how do you choose which, which expansions to play with Terraforming Mars? I'd be curious if you guys want to say in the comments which of your, if you're a Terraforming Mars fan, which, uh, expansion is your favorite. Um, so I know some people have purchased player boards around, like through 3D printers or through uh, other uh, areas that do, you know, third party components or whatever. But I am kind of late to the Terraforming Mars party, so I hadn't really had a chance to bling mine out. I knew that some new stuff was coming. So I waited and I got the new player boards which are sweet and I love the little delegate meeples that come in turmoil they're very cute they have little ties and so you've got these world events you've got this delegates thing going on it definitely is a expansion that will not shorten gameplay I believe prelude is the one that everybody gets really hot on I've really only played base terraforming Mars I'm terrible right um, but now that I have all the expansions, I've been looking to see what people think, which ones are the best. Hey, Dean, uh, which ones are the best expansions? And it feels like Prelude is the one everybody raves about, but I think Turmoil, Turmoil seems fun. So um, another game I want to talk about briefly is Watergate. And I know it's been out for a little bit now, but it's been out of stock. 
and Clay from Capstone Games uh, was doing a reprint and you can see my box here, which is, well no, you can't, it's kind of hidden. This is my box here. So it's a black box. I'll just pull it forward actually, it's a little easier. This beautiful little black box. And I love this game. It was one of those games that when it came out I went, what? Why? Does this need to exist? Um, but it's got Matthias Kramer on it. So you had to check it out, right? Well, I did. I fell in love with one of my top games of the year, last year. And it was Man vs. Meeple approved. We all love it. And there's a new box for it. And so here's the new, it's the same game on the inside, just a new box. Um, but here's the coolest part. It has Man vs. Meeple approved on it. Isn't that neat? I thought that was pretty cool. So, um, all right, so to the comments really quick because I asked a question about terraforming Mars and I want to see what everybody has to say. Um, some of you stopped buying expansions. Uh, it looks like Carol likes Prelude. Halo Elysium add variety that Colony was fun but not needed and hasn't tried Venus Next yet. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I keep seeing everybody rave about Prelude, so. I don't know how I'm going to go about attacking the expansions because I definitely don't think I want to put them all in at once, but I will play them all at some point. So um, I also, I kind of talked about on our last stream, I had some issues so I kind of rushed through it, but Kadama 3D, uh, gorgeous. I haven't had a chance to break it out with my friend group yet, but I will absolutely be playing it soon. And then my new gnome that I got for Christmas, he's my doorstop gnome, but for the stream he hangs out up there. Um, Let's see here, so I have a number of games I want to talk about and I'm going to start with Jurassic Parks because I just played it, it's really fresh in my mind and uh, it's coming to Kickstarter next week I believe and uh, we're do the guys are doing a preview on it so you'll get to see more about it but I really love it, it's got Andrew Bosley art and I think you guys will love it too so let's flip over to my new Ryan Lockett art game mat, game topper mat, which I'm very excited to have show up from my Kickstarter backing. Um, so this is Jurassic Parts, and it's like a little area control game. And it's so cute. Um, let's talk about it a little bit. So you're gonna have some, you're gonna have this, all these dinosaur tiles, and they're gonna get split up, and there's some special rules to it that you guys will see in the preview content and on the Kickstarter page when it comes out, so I'm not gonna go real deep into how you do the setup, but they're gonna end up getting laid out uh, upside down and right side up all around the board, and a, all of them are gonna end up out, all right? And they're gonna be flipped up in a variety of ways, and it'll be in a hex pattern, this is super messy, don't laugh at me. But it'll look, start to look something like this where all the tiles are looking like they're supposed to. And you're gonna have these little cracks in between them and these little chisels are the different player colors and you're gonna be putting them in between these empty spaces in order to break pieces away and start finding and putting together the different dinosaurs uh, that might have been fossilized here and you can earn amber which gives you points to use with this field leader guy um, who allows you to buy certain actions with amber you can sell dinosaurs to him so if you know you've got an extra of something but you gotta be careful because you put those out there then somebody can snag them up from the field leader and complete a dinosaur and then you're out those points and so you've got points based on um, the plants so for every plant, it escalates um, by quantity. You'll get more points. You have random bones, which can be used as a wild in any of the dinosaurs you're trying to create. You have, uh, what is that? A pterodactyl, that's right, a pterodactyl. Uh, and they're just a point a piece. So if you get those, and there's like five of them. Then you have th a three hex dinosaurs, the triceratops. You've got the T-Rex down here, uh, and they're all gonna be worth different points. And so you're trying to put these dinosaurs together and you have your own player board and you have these different doctors that you can be. 
um, and everybody's turn order is the same, but basically you're going, you're sharpening chisels from one side of your board to the other, so from the dull side to the sharp side, and you are chiseling off, and as you chisel off these pieces, they're going to break away. Now, depending on how many people are involved in the chiseling, you're going to split it up, so the person who started the breakup uh, is going to have first choice if they have the most chisels, of course, uh, attributed to that area. And then uh, from there, they're just going to keep, you're just going to keep going until it's all done. And then eventually you're going to be done and you're going to be able to score everything up. And scoring is, like I said, based on those few things and then all the extra amber that's left over in your pile is going to be worth a point apiece at the end of the game if you didn't spend it to do act, those extra actions from the field guy. And uh, it's just a very cute, surprisingly thinky, I don't know if it's surprisingly is the right word I want to use, but it, it did take me by surprise because it is so pretty and cute and um, I was thinking it was meant for kids, which you could easily play this with kids, uh, but it is not an easy game to play in that you've got to, you don't want to, like, for instance, if I had broken apart, if I had broken apart a big chunk area of stuff, and one person, so just one person has a chisel in there and I like break off nine tiles, nobody was paying attention, but one person did and they got one chisel in there, then I'm splitting that find with them. So you have to be careful to make sure that you're using the chisels appropriately, that you're watching what other players are doing so that you're, can, one, if they're gonna run away with an area, you get in on that. And uh, also make sure that you pay attention to how they're getting in on your area. And there's like little rules, like if there's a rock on one side, you have to spin an extra chisel. Obviously it's harder to get through rock. If there's rocks on both sides, you have to spin two more chisels and so on. Um, it's just so dang pretty and it's a lot of fun to play. I had a blast with it. So let's see if there's anything in the comments I need to address. Oh yeah, my brand new mat is amazing. So I got that and I got a gray one just because I really like the plain, like it's just gray with a grid on it, and just thematically being able to change my mat. So I have several uh, on the board. I haven't put the gray one in here yet, but actually all of my mats are like stacked on top of each other so I can quickly um, flip through and choose the right one for whatever game I'm playing. So let's see, what else do I want to talk about? Well, should I get into Wonderland's War already? So I think I will. So we, James Hudson, uh, came to Indiana and played Wonderland's War with us, and uh, so did Ian, one of the designers of the game, and they showed us, uh, you know, I don't know, if it, for those of you that follow the channel, we've, we've played this game at very different iterations throughout its creation process. It used to be a much different game than it is today. Um, I won't talk too much about what it was because what it is today is so great. I don't want to like confuse anybody with what it was before. Just knowing though, watching it grow into what it is today is so wonderful and I love Alice in Wonderland. It's so beautiful. So I'm going to pull up some pictures for you while I talk so you have something better to look at than me, uh, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous game. One of the best things about this game is that it is illustrated by Manny Trimbley, of, uh, who you might recognize from one of my favorite games, Dice Throne, uh, who is just incredible. And oh, my pictures aren't taking up the whole space. We'll just center it for now. That's fine. Um, so you can see how gorgeous this game is. So let me tell you a little bit about how it plays. Now, you're going to get to, part of the reason he was here is because we did a a uh, full playthrough, or instead of our normal round one, we're actually doing a full playthrough of the game. So you guys are going to get to see it. I'm not going to spoil anything for you about how the game turned out, other than that it was a lot of fun. So um, what you're doing is, and let's see if we can, at, at one point, the slideshow, I'm just going to let it run while I talk, but you see, the, here we go, the board, and you've got this tea party, and then you've got five areas around the board that are the areas you're going to be looking to have uh, your, your supporters, your followers in, in order to help you 
maintain control of the area, but at the end of the day, it's a bag builder. And so you're during the tea party, you're traveling around the table until you collect four cards, four seat cards, I guess you'd call them, from the board, which are going to let you add things to your bag or to your play area. There are quests in this game that you can acquire that are going to give you in-game scoring. Uh, however, they can be doubled if you um, do something specific during the game that if you hit that requirement, it's going to flip over and everybody will now know that you have that quest. And now you're going to score double whatever you get at the end of the game uh, for it. But even if you don't get it flipped, you still are going to score it regularly. And I love the quest. I thought that was a really cool addition to the game. Um, but you're going to go area by area and you're going to have war and you're going to be pulling out of your bag tokens and it's unlimited how many you can pull till they're all gone. But inside your bag there's some bad stuff too. And so at some point you could draw too much bad stuff and you kind of have to reset uh, or go out of the war or maybe so those bad things make you lose followers in those different uh, areas of control. And so if you lose the followers, you have nothing left there, you can no longer draw from the bag. So much wonderful stuff going on. I don't know the final pricing for it yet. We'll look for that on the Kickstarter coming February 11th. Uh, I don't want to say anything that would be wrong. I have, I feel like I might have an idea in my head, but I'd rather not say the wrong thing and give people the wrong impression. But I imagine for, this game has a ton of beautiful miniatures. It's got all these um, chips in it, which you see here as poker chips, but they're gonna be kind of like geek up bits, like the ones you see in the um, board game geek store, which is super cool. And of course these miniatures are not the final uh, version of them that you would see um, in the final game. This is a prototype, which is a gorgeous prototype. And at the end of the day, it's got Manny's art on it and it is beautiful. So overall, enjoyed the heck out of the game. It's leaps and bounds better than it was the first time I saw it, which it should be because that's how game development works as you see when you get to see the progress of something and where it started, which was just a really cool idea uh, with a beautiful imprint on it now to what it is today, which is just thematically fun. Um, and the tea, like I said, the tea party, be, you know, getting to be with the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter is one of the characters. Uh, I got to play the Red Queen. I've played the Red Queen at every iteration of the game and it's been phenomenal. Uh, I just really love it and she's a great character. They're all great characters. I'm excited to see what the Kickstarter will bring because I know we only saw a small amount of what was going to be coming with this game. Um, and so, very, very excited there. Let's see here. Back to the comments. Yeah, the miniatures are very detailed in Wonderland's War. Uh, I cannot, cannot wait to see the finals. They're gonna be great. I just love seeing Manny's art come to life as well. So, let's dive into the next game. Um, I've got, let's do a couple of small box games. That'll be fun. To the close up. All right, let's move Jurassic Parks off and we'll move some of these little small boxes on. All right, so I've got Gloomy Graves, which I know Jeremy and Fam played, and I don't know a ton about this one, but it's from Renegade. And you're a grave digger in a dark fantasy world where epic battles rage continuously. The corpses of pixies, goblins, unicorns, and cyclops and dragons have begun to pile up. Keep the place organized as you buy corpses in different areas of the graveyard, or it's your own grave you'll be digging. Oh my, so dark. So, um, oh man. So I, I did not get a chance to play this. I have no idea what's going on here, but this art is really cool. But it looks like Obviously, you're a little set collection probably going on here. I gotta play this game. Jeremy seemed to really like it. He posted about it on Twitter. Feel free to go there to see some of his photos um, from at Man vs. Meeple on Twitter. So next up, I've got Second Chance and Ripple Rush, which I haven't gotten a chance to play Ripple Rush. I know that Jeremy and David have both played it now. Um, this is coming out soon from Stronghold Games, and you've got um, let's see here. Let's look at the back because this is not one I've had a chance to play yet. But they, I mean, they really have all the roll and rights, don't they? So you're going to draw a card, choose where to write it, and then 
make combos. So just like any roll and write, there's these cards that are going to flip and you're going to get combos based on what you draw. Uh, I'll be playing this soon because I am enjoying checking out all the new roll and writes that are coming out. Second Chance, however, Second Chance is a game that's already been out, but they re they needed to reprint it, and you can see, you can see that it looks like the other box I had. It looks a little bit more like Gons and Double Gons. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I always call it Double Gons, but the second second one, Doppelt's so clever. Um, and what they've done is they've just reskinned it. It's the same game. This is this one's by Uve. Uh, and originally it looked a lot more like Cottage Garden. But with this one, you're all going to get, you have like a starting card, and then you, you're gonna, they're going to flip up these cards every round. And you're going to see two of them flip up, and you're going to put them on, on your little grid board here. There you go. There's the starting cards. So the starting card has to be drawn on the center uh, dot. So it has to overlap lap it in some way. And then every card from there, from your starting card, you get to choose one of the two that show up and then draw it and it has to obviously fit on your board. And so eventually, the reason why the game is called Second Chance, you may not be able to do one of the two cards that flip up so you get a second chance. You'll get a card that's just for you, nobody else gets it. And if you can write it on the op in the, one of the open spaces on your board, super. If you can't, you're out. And the person who wins the game is the person that has the fewest empty or uh, you know uncovered cells and then you also get to see there's only so many of each shape in the game so as the shapes get more complicated there's only one of them so some of these simpler ones that allow you to do some planning you hope they don't come up at the same time uh, like the twos and the ones and things like that so that is second chance which has been out but I like this new skin of this um, I thought it was a smart move by the team there at Indie Game Studios. So uh, let's see, what's next? Let's talk about this party game. So let's see if there's any, yeah, so the new, real quick on Second Chance, the new edition came, instead of just plain pencils, it came with colored pencils. The color means nothing to the game. You can just do whatever you want, but if you guys want to share colors and draw in special colors and make your board more colorful, you can. It's just for fun more than anything. So um, there are, yeah, it's like a flip in Tetris. I think that's a good way to say it. There's also a game called Bricks that Stronghold uh, has that feels more Tetris-y to me than this, but the fitting of things together and, and you know, with the odd, looking for those odd shapes has that very nice Tetris vibe. All right, so beer and pretzels. So... Matt at Bezier sent me to this, sent me this game. I was talking to him at one of the shows about the kind of games I play that are different when I'm not with um, the guys, you know, with the Man for Smeeple guys. So um, I uh, we play a lot of dexterity and party games because it's just the group, and because when we get together, it's generally a larger group. And so. Um, he said I'd really like this, and he sent it to me, and the, right off the bat I laughed because the, t the tagline, the quick game of short rules, addictive gameplay, and an unnecessarily long tagline. It's just so silly. So I, I, I was instantly, because I love cheesy stuff, okay? So I'll show you how this game works very quickly. And this is a fun little party game, and there's a string. Yes, there's a string here. So you put the string... It's like a circle. You put it on the table in a circle. All right, we'll make the circle kind of tiny for the purposes of the demonstration. But everybody's going to get, in their player color, a set of coasters and napkins. All right, so coasters and napkins. And these coasters and napkins are going to have a variety of different things on them. Oops, wrong color coaster. All right, and then there's coins, like they're just little plain coins so that you can track points as the game progresses. But what you're doing is you've got, you see these, they've all got pretzels on them. And then you've got, um, one of my purples is missing. Where is my purple? There it is. And you've got one that has a multiplier on it. That's your beer. And then you've got this napkin and it's plain. And here's why. So throughout the game, you're going to be taking turns with the people that you're playing with, tossing from a distance, whoop, these different 
coasters in and everybody's doing that, right? And the goal, and if somebody does this, there's actually a rule in the rule book that says that if you do that, and I'll read it to you because it totally made me laugh. So gameplay, if a coaster lands upside down, it is immediately and carefully removed by the player who threw it while the other players make fun of the coaster tossing impaired player. That coaster is now put aside for, uh, for another round. So that's pretty funny. So anyway, you're gonna keep going and they're gonna be tossing these in here. And as you can see, I'm attempting to cover other people's stuff with things. So the, the napkins are purely screw you, all right? So uh, what, how you score, so see, you can kind of see these pretzels, but they're, they're covered, so they don't count. All four of these pretzels will count, this one pretzel will count, this pretzel will count, this pretzel will count, my times two is not good, this times two isn't good, and this counts. So it's basically add up your money. Did you, how much, and that's your points for the round. It's pretty, pretty silly, um, but a lot of fun. Uh, so we have had a, we had a blast trying that out for the first time with my group, and thank you, Matt, for sending this over. Right in the middle of him and his wife having a brand new baby come come to, to our uh, future gamer uh, type of stuff. So super cute and congratulations to them. And thank you so much for taking the time in the middle of making a human join this world to share such a cool game with me. So Nova Luna will be the next one I talk about. Um, and it's uh, so funny. I should show you guys. I, my husband got me a lightsaber for Christmas and I'm using it to mark where the camera can see and can't see on my table, but can you see my lightsaber? <laughs> anyway, let's put that back where it goes so I know what's going on here. So it's a stunt saber. It makes sounds and I can hit really hard with it actually, which is super, super fun. So, okay, Nova Luna. I, so right before I went to Essen, Andrew in the comments, Andrew Smith, had sent me a tweet from somebody, can't remember who now, uh, and it had, it was talking about what's at Essen and blah, blah, blah. And it had something I hadn't caught before. And this, it was Nova Luna from Spielwise. And it's so pretty. And I wasn't sure what it was. Turns out it's a race game. And uh, we just didn't get a chance to see it at Essen. We walked past it, but it was always busy. Or uh, and it looked like it was still in prototype form, I thought, at the time. But it turns out it was out. And it turns out even cooler is that Stronghold was bringing it to the US. So I was really excited. And now I've got my hands on it. So Nova Luna is a little race game. And what I, it's such a neat, and I, I think I brought it up before, but I don't think I got a chance to really show it. So. Uh, you've got this little moon board, and you're going to have your little moon, make sure everybody can see it. Um, and everybody is going to get these in their player color. <laughs> oh, Andrew says he needs to play this one more. Uh, you know what? It's a great game, Andrew. You should just get it. I've played it with now, so I've pl I originally started playing this game with two players. Um, and I really like it at two players. It's thinky at two players. It's much more difficult at three and four player. But so the game starts off with all these little tiles out around in different colors. I can do that quickly and easily. And just pretend I filled the whole thing in and that there's more than two colors out here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Just the luck of my draw that everything seems very uniform here. Unintentional, I swear. All right. There we go. Now it's full. And so what you're doing is you're choosing one of the, th when it's your turn, you're choosing one of the three that are in front of the moon to take and add to your tableau. And now if one is missing like this, it's one of the three. So you would just skip over the empty space. And the goal here is, is that you're building, and I'll move this up slightly. Make sure you guys can see everything. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm gonna move that up slightly so you don't see it anymore. Um, but you're going to, and whichever one you take is how far you move your player piece around and then um, whoever's in last place to Kaido style gets to go again. So it goes from whoever's furthest behind gets to go. 
um, and then continues play that way. So you don't want to always jump ahead too far because it might be a while before you get to go again. But you're ultimately trying to build this little tableau, right? And you'll notice I'm paying close attention to things like color. So I'm going to want to put probably somehow a yellow here because uh, when I'm putting these together because I need a yellow attached to this. Now when I get a yellow, a teal, and a red, I get to cover this up with one of my discs. And the goal is to be out of your discs first. So you placement's gonna matter and you have things called neighborhoods. So if these two yellow are together, now they're connected. So this little guy right here that says two yellow dots now is completed. This one that has one red dot is now completed because they're touching the tile that it matters. Now it's two yellow because they're connected, so they're a neighborhood. And that's Nova Luna, and it's basically the first person to be done. So let's see the comments. <laughs> Kira's loading the draw again. Tisk tisk, that's funny. All right, so no, the Batman bag is not standard issue. Didn't come with a bag. I had to grab one, and I just so happen to have one. This was a gift from a very nice young lady I met at a show and um, was introducing her to some games for her kids, and she uh, get, gave, let me pick one of these handmade bags that she makes, which I really loved, and then she moved to Indiana, so she's local-ish to us, I, though I don't see her very much. Uh, she's super cool, and I really love that she gave me that bag, and I've had it forever. I use it for all kinds of different games, and now it's for Nova Luna. So that's Nova Luna. Um, I've been playing a lot of Somebody asked, so I'm going to show you. Yes, my lightsaber lights up. Let's go to the front camera. Just because, why not? I mean, it's what we're here for, right? So it's a stunt saber, and it's pretty hefty, and it will light up. Ooh, and it's bright in here, so you can't see how amazing it is. But you can hear it has a lot of different sounds, and it's got, it's got all kinds of things happening that let me know what it's going to do so that I know it's going to you know turn off or turn on so that I can it's a stunt saber it's for choreographed stuff but it's fun so my husband got us each one so that we can battle and his is blue of course but we all know dark side for me so um, all right what's next what's next well come on you saw my lightsaber Sith or Jedi which one do you guys think Obviously Sith. Totally Sith. It's rock, it's, you know, I know, bad guys, whatever, but they're cooler. So I love, I love all the bad stuff and my saber is definitely red. All right, so I wanna get into a few other ones. Um, let's see here. We've played, a, I've played a couple of old favorites. I've played, not even old, some of them aren't even that old. A couple of new favorites I've played again, like Flick of Faith and so on. Um, let's see, let's flip over. Also, I think I mentioned I was gonna show you guys all my mats, so let's do that really quick. Here's my blue mat, which is the one you guys normally see. And then here's my space mat. And then here's my scythe-inspired mat. I don't play scythe, I've never played it, sorry. It has, it just is not a game that appeals to me. I know people like it, but I really loved the landscape of this mat, so I got one of those. And then the adventure mat, and the one I don't have to show on the table yet is my new gray mat. So for now, we're gonna stay with my Ryan Lockett mat, which is obviously semi-inspired by Haven, which is a cute little two-player game he made. Well, actually, I think he just did the artwork for it, but it was a Target exclusive, and it was super good. Um, all right, so new arrivals. So uh, this is now a segment I'm going to we're going to have presented by Crowdox, which is a uh, pledge management tool. So if you do Kickstarters, now I don't know who uses which which pledge manager uh, as far as the ones that I get. If I'm being honest, I can't keep track of all of them. But I did just get Cutie Patootie, which was a Kickstarter I backed. Um, and this was Daniel Zayas, and uh, he had kind of an interesting campaign. I haven't had a chance to dig into it yet, but I've got some sort of wooden thing and then the play mat, and I'm excited to, to figure it out. I'm guessing this is some sort of 
organizer for the inside. But I just, I'm one of those people who back things and I just back them and I'm like, cool, I'll see what happens when it gets here. So I don't always follow the campaign super closely, but it looks really cute. And it's called Little Cutie My Patootie. And that's just lovely. So that's brought to you by Crowdox and, um, and obviously the Zayas company because I picked up this lovely little game. So what's next? I need to get some stuff out of the way. My, my pile is piling up. Okay, how about mind management? So this is a hidden movement game. Um, let's see if there's anything in the comments really quick. So am I Kira Palpatine? I don't know. Not really sure. I'm just Kira, probably. So, <laughs> oh, I like that. So somebody has a stormtrooper decal on their car. I've got, I've had a lot, variety of different things. As you guys know, I'm normally wearing a Star Wars t-shirt. So let's see here. Um, Amanda says she's been enjoying the new Ryan Lockett game, Rome, which is great. And uh, James just back to Warp's Edge. Great choice, man. It's super cool. And then, um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So, hidden movement and mind management. I am not, I, I'm not the biggest hidden movement person, but mind management is a comic. And this project is kind of dear to my heart because I saw this a while back. Um, this was uh, a game that we were looking at for Maple Games when I was involved with that. Uh, and I'm really glad to see that Jay is working on bringing this out because I think the comic is really neat and I think the idea they put together here is really clever. Now, please note this is a prototype that we got um, and it'll be coming out. I think uh, to Kickstarter in March. So there's a big board here, which I'm not gonna get out, but you can see here, this is what the board looks like. And this is the, the person that you're following, the hidden movement person's way of tracking themselves. They're gonna do this, it's a dry erase. And you've got these characters, and you're, what you're doing is, and you've got some special abilities and things, I'm not gonna get all that out, but you're looking for the icons and what you're trying to do is track with these discs where the culprit might be at based on uh, asking questions about, and this is not, I'm boiling it down too simple, but the easy thing I remember, because it's been a while since I played it now, but you're asking about these different icons and then you'll find out, have I ever, has that person ever been in an area with books, for instance? And you'll be able to tr track their movements and there's a time track on the side so based on how much time has moved and how many guys he moves around, you can kind of start to discern where he's at. So it's very clever. Uh, watch for a Kickstarter preview coming for this from uh, Man vs. Meeple from David and Jeremy, I'm sure. Maybe Ryan. I don't know. Maybe all of them. They all seem to really like the game. And like I said, the IP is great. So I'm excited to see this coming out. Matt Kent is the mind behind my management. And we've got Jay and Sin uh, on the, the design of the game. And Matt Kent is the artist for mind management. So super duper cool. I'm not going to break this one out. I just really like this box. I don't know anything about it uh, other than it's a deck builder from Mondo, uh, did, uh, Ryan and Jeremy played this and they seem to really like it. I'm just gonna get it out kind of. But I like the art here. And you know, be kind, rewind your mind. Uh, it looks like a trip. And so, uh, let's just see. It's a heavy little box. What's in here? There's a board, oh my. There's this board here. I really want to get a chance to play this. Since they've already played it, I'm hoping they'll just teach it to me soon. I haven't had much play time lately in the last couple weeks. And then you've got the different characters it looks like here. Ooh, I love this art. This art is great. Dang, I wish I had played, got a chance to play this one. This is awesome. So, I don't know what's going on here. The guys aren't in the comments tonight, so... We'll just let it 
slide, and I'll get a chance to play it eventually, I'm sure, and I can talk more about it, but um, it looks great, and they seem to really enjoy it, so they handed it to me to make sure that I got a chance to show it uh, to you guys and let you know that it's coming out soon. So uh, this is from Mondo, and it's called Video Vortex. It's a deck builder, so if you like deck builders, I am sure you will like this one. So next I'm gonna talk about a couple of party games um, because why not? Party games are great. Uh, first I'm gonna talk about, so crosswords, I started to talk about on a previous episode and I didn't get, because the video stuff, I kinda just breezed through it. So I'm gonna set it up very briefly here and get you guys to see. Ooh, I made a mess in my box. I forgot to put everything back away. Ignore my mess, ignore my mess. Um, but you have, it's like, I don't know the best way to describe it. It's just, it's like, a, it's crosswords. You're, you're trying to come up with the intersection word or phrase that, like here, uh, let's find a good one in the example rule book while I pull things out. So. You have on one side places in the USA and the other one is cartoon characters. Well, Yosemite Sam might be your answer. So no, every time you're gonna get a starts with, starts with goes here and you'll have these colors that indicate where, what other colors need to come out. So there's a two blue, there's a green, ooh, cartoon characters, we were just talking about that. And then down here is a green and a red. And then everybody has these discs and a sharpie, and you're going to write on the back, and mine didn't get cleaned off very well, whoops. Anyway, you're gonna write on the back the word that you wanna put, or phrase that you wanna put in there that makes these things. So, starts with P and is a cartoon character, Popeye. Starts with P and you plug in, phone. Starts with P and that are really old, uh, Rotten peaches, that's not starting with a P. I'm doing bad already. So the, the thing that kept messing me up is I kept thinking the whole board needed to start with P, but it's really just this aisle. And so then from here to here, it's vacation spots you plug in. What? So then you have to try and be creative. And so some of the examples that are in this little rule book here, like boys' first names and colors, Fred would count, because red is in Fred. So. Uh, you don't want to be too uptight about how you play this game. But ultimately, then everybody's going to have discs in here face down based on whatever. And if, just like in just one, if two people have the same word, they don't count, so they'll get erased and not count towards your points. And you keep going until somebody gets seven points. So the first person, uh, the person with the most discs that didn't get X'd out during the game, uh, gets three points, two points, then one point, and then you guys start over and you keep doing it until somebody gets to seven. And it is a heck of a lot of fun. This is not out yet. It comes out April 1st from Indie Boards and Cards, and it is an absolute blast to play. So that is Crossed Words. And everything just fits right here in this box very nicely. So while I put this away, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Stay Cool. So Stay Cool is a party game that I, I just had explained to me uh, in the last couple of days. Jeremy and his wife and friends played it uh, the other night at a get together, it sounded like. And so it sounds like a heck of a lot of fun, but it's, it's like multitasking the game is how he was explaining it to me. And then actually seeing how it works, I was like, oh yeah, it's definitely multitasking the game. So let's talk about how it works. So, um, boop, boop, come out. You've got, let's see if there was anything. Oh, Jeremy's in the comments, so he can comment more, especially if I'm explaining this incorrectly. So each player has a role. And so there'll be a role of the timekeeper. And this is the timekeeper space. Then you've got the person who's supposed to be figuring stuff out, and they'll have these dice that I can't get out of the box. There we go. They have letters on them. And then you'll have somebody that has these red cards and somebody that'll have these green cards. One on either side of the person who has the dice. So 
the person who has the dice is listening to both the player on their left and the player on their right. The player on their left is asking them the question in red, and they're going to keep going as they get the answers right. Um, they'll ask the next one, but their answers have to be answered with the dice. Whereas then the other player with the green cards is asking questions, and you have to answer them verbally while still answering the red question with the dice. All while there's somebody timing you with this thing and as it gets down to the end it's going to flip and go to the second one and so on and so on and there's some rule so you basically get two minutes this is a 30 second timer and there are some rules around like you can skip one of the questions but then the timer is going to move to the next spot automatically so you essentially lose time so you want to be careful about that and if the person doing the timer isn't paying attention in the first round then the player is getting more time for free but in later rounds it starts to penalize them because they have to pay attention and it gets progressively harder each round this is from scorpion mask and i'm really looking forward to playing it because it seems like a lot of fun and like it would be just super silly. So I'm going to flip back to the front camera for a minute so I can talk to you and look at these uh, comments coming in. So <laughs> wires getting crossed. That was where my head went with that game is like seems super crazy. But if you have four players, everybody has a very specific thing they have to do. So the person that's really in the hot seat, the most is the active player answering the questions, but everybody has something to do. I think if you were to go, what does it play to? It says three to seven. Whew. So there might be people sitting out. If it's in a three player game, there's probably stuff that you have to do, two people have to do or something, or you have to do more than one thing. But I would say, obviously, if you have a group of four, this game is probably perfect. And a group of, I don't see why it wouldn't be funny for a group of seven because you're watching the hilarity ensue. Um, but it does seem like four is best because everybody has something to do. Oh, looks like Jeremy just said the same thing in the comments. So that's neat. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jeremy, if you're still in the comments, I was talking about Video Vortex, so feel free to give your thoughts on that. I'm going to quickly breeze over a couple of games that I've played, and I'm just going to grab them versus going back to the overhead because I'm not going to open them up. Everybody knows these games. So I had the opportunity to share two games with somebody that uh, has never played them before, both from Floodgate Games, uh, just because they are gateway and they are somewhat newer to playing games, like hobby games, and I would find the Floodgate games are really great for that. Um, these are both... Uh, have Daryl Andrews' name on them as well. So Bosk, which is just beautiful. Uh, I love how great this game is. Uh, Co-designed by Erica Bioris, uh, who is also awesome. She just did a Scott Pilgrim Miniatures the World game. And gosh, she's got so many things out there now. It's hard to... She did Kodama 3D. I was just talking about Kodama 3D. So she's got her name on all kinds of stuff lately. And she's awesome. So this is an area control game. Uh, where you're planting trees and leaves are falling and you're going through the different seasons and it's a lot of fun if you guys haven't tried Bosque. Definitely, definitely check it out. Um, and then of course a mainstay in Sagrada. So I have played all the expansions now and I really like it, but we did just play the core Sagrada game because I had multiple people who hadn't played Sagrada at the table for this one, which was really interesting. And uh, I forgot how much just fun the game is, especially for people who are new to the hobby. Um, it's just been a long time since I'd broken out Sagrada just to play Sagrada. Uh, but I like all the new stuff. I'm really a fan of the 5-6 player expansion with the draft pool. I'm really a fan of the new um, frosted glass die uh, and the newest expansion. And there's, I believe, two more expansions coming. So. Lots of cool new stuff to come from Sagrada, I'm sure. So let's see here. Um, Meeple Medley hasn't tried Bosque yet. It's a surprisingly, I mean, it can be a little bit mean for a walk in the park, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, the meat of the game is in fall, and really when you're dropping the leaves off the trees. The trees is, they've basically made a game out of setup. So you're, you have to put all the trees out, and that determines where you're going to, where your trees are going to be to drop the leaves based on the uh, direction of the wind during fall. 
And so that's it's just a really, really cool little game. All right, so moving on, I'm going to talk about three more games in some amount of detail before we're done for today. So let's move over to the close-up again. We'll get these party games out of the way. The first game I'm going to just briefly touch on is Quirky Circuits. For those of you that aren't familiar with this game, I'm a big fan of it because um, several reasons. Mostly that I get to use it in my robotics club. So I, I do I coach a robotics club and I use it to teach them some teamwork stuff, but also um, it's a programming game. So it's it's thematically appropriate and it's quite cute and I will show you why. Um, all right, so we've got this little scenario uh, booklet that's going to have all these different things that you can do. Uh, and they have different characters for each of the different types of rooms. So Quirky is with the kitty cat. Um, and then there's also, uh, so Gizmo is, I think, the cat's name, and it has a little vacuum it rides on. There's a bee, and there's a doggy, and there's a robot. And these are, they're all kind of involved in some way with robots, and their job is to do something in order to get something else accomplished. And you have battery life over here, so this is how many rounds essentially you have to get it done. And there's going to be things on the board that they have, in this case, the cat is going to pick up. So let me find my little kitty meeple. It's not even a meeple, it's a miniature. Let's just talk about how cute these are. And they all kind of hold on to in some way, shape, or form, except for him, because he's sucking up whatever the dust bunnies are as he vacuums around, and he's sucking them up, and you're getting rid of them. But like the doggy, he's got a little space in his mouth, and he'll hold the little uh, things he finds in his mouth, and he'll carry them around the board. And then you've got this adorable little robot, and he has one of his is uh, like working on one of those sushi lines where you're picking up dishes and you're cleaning them up, and then you're putting out the plates. Um, and then you've got this adorable little bee uh, who's going to be looking for seeds, and she holds uh, her tokens in her hands there. And the cool, neat thing about this game that I'm underselling here is that it's like the mind in a way. So you've got these different movement cards based on the character that you're playing with. So in this case, this is Gizmo. And all the players are going to get these, and you can only you can tell what they are on the back only that this is a turning card and this is a movement card. So you're either moving forward or backward or you're turning in some way. And that's all the information that you have. You can't talk. You, you want to have a strategy about what needs to happen before the round begins because once the players start playing down their cards, uh, you're trying to program what the robot is going to do. So for the kitty, um, and we flip these over, we now see that the kitty's gonna move twice forward three times forward and one times forward. So if they can't do all that stuff, there's special rules. Like you guys have, have ever seen the little Roomba robots that clean your floor? That's what this kitty is on. So if it bounces into a wall, what does that do in real life? Well, it turns and it goes a different way. So um, it works that way. And each of the characters has something special about them and how it works. Now, I have found that this game is incredibly useful in teaching teamwork. And while I love this game as an adult, and I highly recommend it to adults, um, what it's done for me and my robotics club is incredible. And um, we were able to, I had two very different experiences with the game, and I'll talk about that just briefly. Um, I did show the Watergate cover. Jeremy's in the comments talking about Watergate, so before I go on any more about quirky circuits, I'll just show this really quick again for everybody. So this is the new Watergate cover, same game inside, but it's got our little man versus meeple approved on it, which is super cool. So versus the, the old one over here that I had, oh, I had it out, you couldn't see it earlier, but this is old versus new. So, okay, so back to quirky circuits and robotics. Um, my robotics club, I have two teams. I have third through fifth, and I have sixth and seventh graders. So I used to have just third through six, and we made them one team, but this year we decided to make them into two teams and do all that. And so 
we actually I played it with two different groups within my club. The first group that played it was really neat. They, they figured out what I was trying to do with the teamwork and they kind of got in sync. And I was able to talk about what that means for robotics because they only have one minute to do what they need to do and really 30 seconds each because they, they work as two, in sets of two pairs of kids competing with a team from another school of two kids and they have each 30 seconds to move the robot around to accomplish the goal. And this year, it's Vex IQ, and if you want to look up Vex IQ Challenge, you can see what we're doing in our robotics club. It's really neat. But they can't, they don't have a lot of time to talk, so having a plan and a strategy ahead was super important, and the game helped me teach them that. On the flip side, the other team kind of had a breakdown in communication uh, and lack of communication, and, uh, and they just started getting really frustrated with each other, and it allowed me to teach them, like, you can't allow, you know, and during competition, we're not going to be able to do this. You guys are going to have to be able to think on your feet. You're going to have to be able to communicate clearly in between rounds in order to accomplish the goal that you all are accomplishing together. So it's a very interesting dynamic with Quirky Circuits, and I think it's really neat. And I think that it's such a great game. So if you have a robotic club or you have a kid that's interested in programming in any way, or robotics in any way, I highly recommend Quirky Circuits. And just for yourself, because it's super duper fun. All right, so back to the close-up. We're gonna move on to, I think the one everybody's probably excited about. The one I haven't played, but everybody else has played, and that is I Own Cats. Oh, oh my gosh, this box. Um, this game. Let's see here. So Games of Fire in the comments is talking about, as a teacher, she should get quirky circuits to help her classes work better together. And I would recommend that you reach out to Clad Hat because I believe they might have a program that helps with, at least with robotics programs. But Karen, I think, um, I think it's probably a great idea to reach out to Clad Hat because uh, they're really behind getting the game into robotics club's hands and school's hands so i think that's a great idea for you so i love cats jeremy howard live streamed this on facebook earlier today i highly recommend you go check it out uh for the solo mode if you're interested in the solo mode earlier this week david and ryan played it on mvm live on wednesday um a two-player game so this game is one to four players 69 minutes ages eight plus and I cannot get this lid off. Okay, must be all that Mountain Dew that Jeremy dumped on it. Just kidding, just kidding. All right, so this game, I remember seeing this at Origins last year. Uh, Frank was there and it, you have these boats. Can I even find it in here? Sorry, I'm struggling because I'm trying to reach across. So you have this boat and the cats are gonna come out in these polyominoes. I haven't played this yet. I really want to, but I am just obsessed with how all of these are different art. I mean, it's pretty incredible. And I just absolutely love that. If you guys have heard me talk about other games that have unique art on it, it I, I get really excited because you can do just a tiny little tweak to make, make each tile unique. Uh, and it makes it great, but in here, it's actually more. And what's so cool about this art and the fact that it's cats is cats lay in stupid ways, right? It makes perfect sense that these polyominoes would make sense for cats. It's just so dang clever. I have no idea how you play it. And then there's these uh, special cats. He gave me the overview at Origins, but I have definitely slept since then. So I am looking forward to Jeremy and David, and everybody said they would teach me how to play it. Everybody's got a copy. This is Jeremy's I borrowed for tonight because I wanted to show it because everybody's talking about it, and it's just so beautiful. And I will know more about how to play it soon, and I'm sure I'll talk about it again. But for now, I just wanted everyone to get a chance to see it because the guys have been playing it. And frankly, you can go and watch the live streams to see how the solo mode works. You can go watch the live stream to see how um, two-player works from the Wednesday live stream on YouTube. Uh, the solo stream was on Facebook today, so you go to our Facebook page and you'll check it out. And just unbelievably gorgeous game. Everybody seems to really love it. I cannot wait to play this game. I just can't wait. I didn't really think I liked polyominoes as much as I turn out I do. I've played several polyomino games lately. 
and I'm just having a lot of fun with them. So let me go back to the front camera and let's see. The, the last game I'm going to talk about is one I talk about a lot, so bear with me. I'm going to get it out over here. And it is Marvel Champions because I am obsessed with this game. I can't get enough of it. It's so good. And I can't wait for more content. And I keep seeing all the teasers and I get really, really excited because I love this game. They can't give me enough. And there's an endless amount of stuff to do for this game. So I got, and this I just wanted to get it out here. I got finally got Captain America and Miss Marvel. And I hadn't... I uh, haven't played Miss Marvel yet. I've only played Captain America. Uh, I tend to go, I tend to get attached to Captain Marvel. And so I really like her and what she does. And I felt like there was some of that strong, that mm, just unbridled power stuff going on with, uh, with Captain America with Steve Rogers as well. But they are very different, and each character in this game has been very different in their own way, and I really enjoy each of them for the unique, unique things that they do, like with Iron Man and kind of the, you know, he's just a guy until he builds a suit, so kind of having that whole dynamic of him having to bring out the suit and Spider-Man just being able to backflip out of any situation and T'Challa being able to do the Wakanda forever is super neat. Um, I haven't played a lot with She-Hulk yet, but she seems really great too. I, I had, she's played in like randomly in some of our games. Uh, I feel like she's one that I need to go figure out more about. My husband played Miss Marvel and he seemed to like her, but again, we were, it was our first play. Uh, and so I didn't get it. I was really paying attention to Captain America. So let's look at some of Captain America's stuff. I'm going to go to the close-up and hope that we can see the cards okay. And you guys tell me. Um, but here he is. So Steve Rogers, as you know, if well, maybe you don't know. So in Marvel Champions, you're going to be, oh, I feel like I should flip to my blue. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. It's far more thematically appropriate for... Marvel Champion. So, um, Steve Rogers, alter ego side, you're going to have to flip to become Captain America. And that's how all of the heroes work in this game. Um, I want to see if I can get closer so you guys can see the cards better because of where we're at. So let me see if I can get that looking better. Ooh, you're dealing with me doing some weird stuff here, but that's okay because we're going to make it so you can see this card better. Is that better? Can we see it? Can we see it now? A little bit better. A little bit better. Not, not quite as good as I want it to be. So let's do... There we go. That's good. All right. Real time changes. So you guys are going to see some stuff on my screen because I'm trying to get in closer here. So you've got your standard Mockingbird, you bring Falcon into play here, but then you have the hero specific cards like Fearless Determination. So he's going to get plus one thwart until the end of the phase and draw a card. Uh, Heroic Strike where he's dealing six damage to an enemy. If you're paying with a certain resource you get to stun uh, with the aggression resources. But the big one for him is shield toss. So this costs zero to bring out and your hero action, attack, discard X amount of cards from your hand, then return Captain America's shield from play to your hand, deal four damage to X enemy. So however many cards you have in your hand and you get rid of, shield toss is going to go ting, 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 do damage and come back, which is excellent. Um, so based on how many enemies are out. So you're fighting Ultron, mm, that shield toss is gonna come into play and it's gonna be so good. And no joke, Captain America can do this all day. That's his deal. So you get a couple of those in there. You have shield block, which is a nice interrupt uh, for when you're getting your butt handed to you. I think I showed hero strike already. Um, Steve's apartment, so this is when he's an alter ego. 
he can heal a little bit, which is nice. I like seeing Squirrel Girl show up as an ally to add to your deck. Wonder Man is also in there now. And um, a few others. Also, let's not forget about Captain Cap's helmet. When Captain America would be defeated, set his hit point dial to one instead. So, I mean, can't get more cap than that. You just can't. And then his shield, so restricted, max two restricted cards per player. Captain America gets plus one defense and gains retaliate one, which is excellent. Excellent. And then, of course, we also get Agent 13 in there. So that are just kind of a quick preview of some of the Captain America stuff. I am definitely going to be playing this a lot more. Uh, I can do this all day. So I'm going to have, I'm going to take a hiatus from Captain Marvel and switch to Captain America for a little while because I need to get to know him. And I'm still using, I'm still using all the core decks. I haven't started tweaking them yet because I don't know how I want to tweak them yet because I, I don't play as much as I would like. And so I want to make sure I'm really, really confident in all of them. And I don't want to go and just look up what other people think the good builds are because I feel like if I just get used to them in their current uh, state, it will make it a lot easier to turn them up later. You know what I'm saying? So uh, let's see. Was there anything else I wanted to talk about today? I don't think there was. That pretty much covers it. Uh, it seems like we had a good feed today and we didn't have any uh, funky stuff. So let's look at the comments and see if there was anything I missed before I sign off for the evening. Uh, let's see. Lots of people looking forward to playing Isle of Cats. Uh, not a cat fan though. So filling the boat is the hardest thing. I, I have heard that about Isle of Cats. And then so back to Tr Marvel Champions. Um, looks like the shield toss is definitely uh, the fan, a group of the fans liking that one. And I gotta say, James said this, and I do think that I agree that flipping from the alter ego side to the hero side is one of the greatest things about the game. It's knowing when is so important. The very first time we played Marvel Champions, I didn't, I didn't know that. And I went in and I had, <laughs> had Iron Man and I flipped way too early. I mean, it's just not something you do with Iron Man. Tony's not ready till he's ready. You gotta build the suit, otherwise he's bouncing off the ceilings and stuff, right? Because he's only got one boot. So, um, hey, Rob is in the comments. He won a Gizia. congratulations. I did get your email and I was getting ready to reply and then I realized how close to time it was tonight. So we will get your um, copy to you soon. Uh, so, let's see. Hey, Pew PewDiePie is in the comments. Hey, what's up, man? My daughter has watched you forever, if that's really you. Is that actually you? That's pretty cool. Uh, she's like a huge fan. Um, I, I, I think. I'm old, okay. Uh, but I remember her watching your videos. So, anyway. Uh, let's see. I believe Iowa Cats is only uh, Kickstarter backers right now. Uh, and then it'll be out in retail later. So, uh, you'll, I believe, you know, he'll have it out uh, for retail release once all the backers are done, I think, is how he does his thing. So let's see. I think that's it for tonight, y'all. Uh, I am traveling next week, and so I won't be here in the studio. If I can figure out how to do a stream from the road, I'll be streaming from good old Arizona. Otherwise, I'll be back in two weeks uh, to tell you what I played over the past uh, couple weeks. Uh, anyway, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time.